Well, hello one and all, I'm Bradford Becker. Welcome to our program. This evening we continue on in our 22nd year of broadcasting Red Barn Radio and we welcome you to show number 853. Nuts, nuts. This evening on Red Barn Radio we have Lucas Wayne. Lucas has roots both in Illinois and Kentucky and we learned about him first from a prior guest on our broadcast some time ago. I don't remember exactly when that was. Uh, folks, this is a man with a super expansive voice. Uh, he pairs it with his heartfelt, often funny or sometimes devastatingly sad songs. Uh, and he's showing himself more than capable of commanding an audience and, and stirring souls as I know he will stir yours this evening. I'm glad we worked it out for Lucas to join us here on the Red Barn stage tonight. Welcome, Lucas Wayne. Thank you. Uh, this first song we're going to do is called What a Pleasure. It's a song I wrote for my wife. Uh, a little joke, as uh, I always tell, is it's, uh, it's my response to Cardi B's song, WAP. Uh, so this is my version of that tune. But it's called What a Pleasure instead of the other thing. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> it goes like this.
Just a B.O. Just a B.O. Just a, just a, just a, just a B.O. man. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performance. Lucas Wayne is a storyteller at heart. He sings about his everyday experience, about places he's been, about growing up in eastern Kentucky and southern Illinois. Lucas writes songs expressing undeniable human truths in ways anyone with a beating heart can access. He's got a beautiful voice to drive these tunes uh, to places unknown, and tonight he brought with him a great band of players, Nathan Graham on stand-up bass and vocals, Tim Whiteford on pedal steel guitar, and Maxwell Sad Max Centony on drums. Welcome back, Lucas Wayne and the Cottonmouths. Thank you. Oh, this next tune we're gonna do is called $600 Van, and uh, it's kind of kind of a funny story. It's uh, my buddy Steve-O is a, uh, oh well, uh, junk man of sorts. He's, he's into derby cars and got all kinds of stuff. And he had this old van sitting over at a, uh, local mechanic shop and I said hey man what do you got to have for that old van over there he said I don't know about six hundred dollars I said well shoot I don't have six hundred dollars I said how about I write you a song and so he said well you write a song and we'll talk about it so I wrote this song a couple years ago it's called six hundred dollar van and uh and just this year I performed uh Steve-O's wedding ceremony to his his lovely wife Lena and he gave me the van so we got a $600 van sitting at home. Of course, we didn't drive it tonight, but we'll get her, we're going to get her worked up. Anyway, so this song's called $600 Van. This one's from my buddy Steve-O. <coughs> hey, Steve-O, won't you sell me a $600 van? I'll fix up that back winter and I'll drive across the land. Singing songs in Old Men Road and some from my own hand. Hey, Steve-O, won't you sell me a $600 Damn near every 
cash. Well, I'll put your name in this song, give you a bag of grass. Could you just this once invest in your dreamer of a friend? And if I ever make it, you'll be with me in the end. Hey, Steve, I want you to sell me. Thanks a bunch. <clears throat> this next one we're gonna do is a uh, is a song about my my uncle Hal. He was a uh, he was a, another junk man. <laughs> Got a lot of those in my friend circle back home. But uh, he he used to haul scrap down to uh, the you know the scrap yard and things, and he picked up all kinds of stuff and fed goats and chickens and all kinds of animals wherever he went. And so he passed away in 2018. And I wrote this song about him, and it's just called Uncle Hal, so. Well, one man's trash was Uncle Hal's treasure. He gave a lot of hell, took a whole lot of pleasure. Picking up that junk on the side of the road. Well, he darn near lived at the city dump. He had a snow white door on a cold black truck. He was the goofiest son of a gun I've ever known. He had a dog named Button and another called Bud. They all drank beer and they all ate good. You know, he knew when Casey's Pizza went to trash. He weren't too proud to pick it up. He always tried and saved a buck. He said it all tastes the same, so why scrap feeding whatever critter wherever he's at he ain't had no license so many years he didn't drive that truck brought him here and some say he's a fool he ain't got any sense well i'd say he's got more than you've ever spent That's a true story. That man had another woman's name on the back of his tombstone. <laughs> I'm telling you, one man's trash, Uncle Hal's treasure. Gave a lot of hell, took a whole lot of pleasure. Picking up that junk on the side of the road. Well, he darn near lived at the city dump. He had a snow white door on a cold black truck. He was the goofiest son of a gun I've ever known. Yes, he was the goofiest son of a gun. And so Uncle Hal had a stepson, and his name was James. And James uh, is a very interesting fellow. He, he, uh, I also did the, the, <laughs> the ceremony for his wedding back in December. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, 
this song I like to say is kind of a picture of James's life at, at the time that I wrote it because he don't really live like this now but at the time he was well he still lives in the shed but he you know he he didn't have no running water he was on solar power and he he just kind of lived really rough and so but he was a, he's a really nice guy and he helped you out anytime you need it and so I thought I'd honor him by writing this song it's just called James and uh, he's a good friend of mine and uh, a good a good feller to have if you need to move something heavy. <laughs> Strong as an ox and smart as one too is what I always tell him. Anyway, this song's called James. <laughs> swears he's got it made with his spot there in the shade at night he lays his head neath a one room metal shed and he wakes up in the morn thanking God he'd been born and he treats folks right and rarely vibes in the wind he flies a motor powered mountain bike he's who he is he ain't ashamed, he's my good old buddy James. Solar power, no running water in the summer, it's hotter. So James takes a share at the local campground. He's getting gray, getting older, says the winter's getting colder. And he wouldn't mind the warmth of a woman around. you why when you need a stronger man there he is to lend a hand and you'd swear he's made of steel an old roughneck who lost the will to hold a job and so he waits for a call from old man Cates working for petty cash he don't drink smokes a little grass he pays his port fines when he can so he can be free again with the rest feeds the cats says you can't dwell on the past some call him weird and call him names i call him friend i call him james
Thank you. That one's called James. He's a real good friend, good feller. This next tune we're going to do is a, is a song that uh, I've had. Uh, I was real lucky. Th this guy behind me, Max uh, Centini, he, he runs this record label called River to River Community Records. And uh, he was nice enough to put this next song out for me. Uh, it's called Dancing With You. It's a song I wrote for my wife. Um, just about being in love and, and sticking around and, uh, you know, dancing in the living room. That's what we do sometimes because our house is real small, so our living room and our kitchen is about like the same thing. <laughs> so really, sometimes it's dancing in the kitchen, but sometimes it's dancing in the living room. just depends on how far we step. <laughs> anyway, kick her off, Tim. Dancing with you in the living room Slowly swaying to a children's tune It's the same one from our wedding day I love you more today than yesterday with you in the morning time turn off alarm turn on the bathroom light hurry up you know i gotta go hug and a kiss and then i'm out that door working at a harry barber shop you're running through my mind non-stop i hate to think that we could your makeup up and fix your hair where you want to go i'll take you there being with you is my favorite thing i need you like a fiddle needs a strain when you come home Our guest tonight on Red Barn Radio is Lucas Wayne, and um, he's here with his great band. Uh, you guys are sounding terrific. It's just working. 
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's been and, great. And I love and I love your uh, I love your friends, and I, and I I think I love your wife as well. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah. Get in line, man. <laughs> no, I I just I I just love uh, I love your affection for these people <laughs> and um and how you can just you just tell the truth about them and and um it sort of brings out the beauty in them yeah that's you know uh one thing i've always tried to do is just tell tell some stories of some folks that i i know decently and uh you know uh especially with like my uncle hal you know i kind of you know grew up just watching him do crazy stuff my whole life and so that song kind of wrote itself <laughs> And then, you know, the songs about, uh, the song about James is kind of the same thing, you know, is just being around him and, and just, ob I try to observe things and then put them down on, uh, you know, on paper, I guess. Yeah. Do you do that? Do you make it a routine of like pulling out the phone and. Oh yeah. And just, just on the way down, down here, we were, I was jotting down quotes and stuff that we were, we were saying on the way here. Yeah. So. Like what, what, give me an example of one. Uh, well, you never hear anybody say red, blue and white, you know? You always hear them say red, white, and blue. Oh, true. Oh, yeah, America. True but that. you never hear nobody say or blue, red, and white, you know. That was, <laughs> that was one of them. And then uh, I don't have my phone on me, so I can't pull oh, it that's out. That's right. That's good. No, I, just, I was just looking yeah. for one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's one. That's the one that popped in my head. <laughs> well, you're, you know, we, we talk a lot about the, the songwriting process uh, on the program. I, I try to avoid that as much as I can because it never seems like people want to talk about it. But um, I think that you're sort of um, you're sort of unveiling uh, a, a process here for songwriting, which I would call living. Yeah. You know, and and um, it just seems that sometimes the best songwriters are just the ones who live a life and and develop relationships and um, become vulnerable and and um, spend time with people who maybe are a little bit different from them, you know, get lost in their hobbies. It's just, just great. I loved, I loved hearing you. I, I, I mean, just if I, doing, doing that, the Uncle Hal and James song back to back was, was very nice. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, like that. Sometimes we do it kind of far enough away in the set that it's kind of funny because it's like a call back to, hey, remember we did that one earlier? Is oh, no, it was perfect. You know, it, yeah. it was perfect, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the next the next tune we'll do here after a while is uh is about my so the way that that this all worked out was where I live now in my little tiny house where we dance in the living room uh -huh. right next door was my uncle Hal's house which was also my great grandmother Kate's house and so it was passed down and then I ended up with it after Uncle Hal passed away and behind him was my uncle Ed's house who my aunt Trish and my uncle Jerry now inhabit ah. and so the next tune we're gonna do uh is about them and and just kind of uh you know how uh some folks is kind of uh frugal with their money i do you know my my aunt trish was More a depression like. she was a depression era baby so they you know they try to really stretch the stretch the dollar and she, but she uh she's just like how did it. yeah with yeah. the with the tombstone right yeah just like how did yeah same thing and she's been hooked on mountain lightning since it came out i think Huh. And uh, she drinks two or three or six of them things a day. And so, you know, I had to kind of include a song <laughs> about <laughs> about them just to kind of round it all out. But, uh, you know, you're talking about songwriting process. And my thing right now is, you know, I'm kind of worried, like, what, what in the world am I going to write about? Because I've just wrote about all these family members and stuff. And it's like, I'm kind of running out of family members, so I'm going to have to start making some new friends <laughs> to write some <laughs> Write some songs about. So um, it seems to me that you probably have um, a lot of material just there at uh, Nelson's on Main. No, Nelson's. The barber shop. Yeah. Yeah. So it used to be called Nelson's on Main. Oh, and no and more. It's now it's just Nelson's barber shop. Nelson's but we are back on Main. Oh, well, all for right. For a while, see. Okay, this Wait is very confusing. So, hold on. Let's yeah. Let's let's go back. This is very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've had the same shop since 2020, but I've moved it two times. So I, I started out in a spot, and then I moved to another spot, and I just recently moved to my, hopefully my final resting place for the <laughs> barbershop business. Um, but we are back on Main, but it's just Nelson's Barbershop. And, and do you have to, um, 
Do you have to be like officially sort of certified or yeah, licensed? Yeah, I'm licensed. To I'm do licensed that? in uh, Illinois and in Kentucky. Actually. Oh wow! All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, but I was going to ask you. Sorry, before we go to the barbershop, um, are th all these family members you're talking about this property, this area where you all live? Is that in Illinois? Yeah, it's in southern Illinois. So we we live in a little town called Carmi, which uh, if you read it, it looks like Carmi, C A R M I. Okay, yeah, like. But yeah, you know, so uh, and my family has been there. Um, for at least three or four generations, so. And, and what, have, um, what have they done there other than, well, they've been junk people? Uh, well, you know, other than junkin', uh, yeah. you know. Was that always <laughs> a hobby for, for was this a, a hobby for Uncle Hal? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It was more of a lifestyle. It wasn't really yeah. a hobby. He, he really lived junk man, you know. Yeah. His right. whole house was covered in stuff, and when he passed away and I inherited, you know, I got the property, it was, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know if I could describe how, how much junk there was there. Yeah, but <laughs> so some things, some things there that are really uh, precious to you. You know, there were some uh, artifacts that I I got kind of sentimental about, but uh, you know, that stuff was his treasure. It's not necessarily wasn't necessarily mine. So huh. you know, I found a couple pieces in there, mostly stuff that uh, belonged to you know the family, some family heirlooms and things. Yeah. Uh, there was a picture that came out of there of my, so my Uncle Hal was named after a great Uncle Hal who served in World War I, and there's a photo of him with the whole company uh, that survived, and I've still got it. It's a, I don't know, about a three foot long photograph. Oh, that's precious. Of the whole company from World War I, 1902, I think is what it was. Or wow. 1922, I'm 22, sorry. yeah, okay, right. My, you know, I'm not real good at history, I write songs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so? Are you the first uh, person in your family who's been a barber? First, first barber. Uh, well, I, I mean, not, like licensed barber. Yeah, not. I think there was one that was, you know, back in the in the uh, ancestral. This guy named Thomas something. He lived down in Shawnee Town, and we were some some kin to him. But that was back in like the early 1900s. So, huh. first one in a while, I'd say. What do you, um my my wife's uh, grandpa was a barber in uh, Brattleboro, Vermont, and he he said to her that he liked um, he liked being a barber more than he liked cutting hair. Is that is that you too? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah. really like working. I just like being a barber. It's kind of nice to hang out in the shop. My favorite days are when people come in and just you know shoot the shoot the breeze with you a little bit. They don't really. Sometimes they won't even get a haircut. They just come into, oh, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Oh, man, that's crazy. What do you think about that, you know? Huh. So that's that's a lot of fun. So I think about this as a guy's place. I think of the word barber as being kind of male-centric. Yeah, uh, you know, there are some some ladies that, that stop in that I'll work on, but mostly men, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so do do does the barber do just the, uh, like, sort of the uh, razor cut type, tight kind of cut or do you do beard work i prefer like to do just yeah you know clipper stuff but i mean there are we're, we're getting back into this hippie hippie craze uh how with all these kids up? growing their hair out long how it's do you a, keep up with see, it look at me i don't i don't have none mine disappeared went all south for the winter never did go back north <laughs> but uh what would do, how do you how do you keep up with the trends i mean in, in your training did you learn how to you know like do the um i mean i go to a stylist myself. sure i don't go to a barber uh, Shame on I need, you. I, I need a little feathering <laughs> and this kind of shaping and that kind of thing. No, do you? Yeah. Uh, do you know I feather. Yeah, hey, I, I do some feathering. You do a little feathering. I do a little feathering. Yeah. Okay, good. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little feathering every once yeah. in a while. Don't hurt nobody. <laughs> no, do you? Do you have to keep like in your field? Do you have to do like professional development? Like, I mean, if you, you want to be, if you want to be, uh, keep up with the you trends know, keep up stuff. with the times. But me, I, I'm kind of, I'm fine with being an old fart. You know, I'll just do the same old thing. So no. you don't ever, <laughs> so, you, so you don't ever like get out there and go oh, no, hawking I, for new clients and that kind of thing. I, I don't, but like people will bring you a photo of, of something that they want, and you're like, okay, well, I could try that, and then you know. So that's about as out of my comfort zone as I get. Is that what happens a lot? Oh yeah, you get a lot of people that bring in pictures, and sometimes you have to explain to folks that that they don't have that kind of hair and anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> do, yeah. Do you ever, I, I imagine you get guys who come in there like, you know, 65, yeah, 70 and say, Hey, uh, can you, can you make my hair look like this? And yeah. it's a picture of them when they were 18. Yeah. Some of them are downright delusional, <laughs> but you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, I, I want to talk more about this, but let's. Uh, why don't we get back to some more music for now? Let's get back to uh, hearing some great tunes from Lucas Wayne and his band. Thank you. Yeah. So this song's called Great Value Pizza. It's about my Aunt Trish and my Uncle Jerry. And like I said, we grow a little garden every year together, and uh, we uh, try to hang out as much as we can. And, and uh, yeah, so. You know, I don't know if that they put. Because we did that. I know yeah. that you, I noticed Here. that you did that. I was wondering who put, who put grass on the pizza. But, that was <laughs> but it looked all right. You know, I'll try some later. Good, you know. yeah, please do. Yeah, I will. That's good stuff. Uh, anyway, so this one's called Great Value Pizza. Why don't you come on in, they'll treat you to a great value pizza. There's a can of Mountain Lightning. No, they don't do the do. This stuff here's much sweeter, and it's $3 cheaper, and you'll not tell no difference after one or two. Looking for his hose, he can't hear himself fart or see beneath his nose. But he grows the best tomatoes on this side of the tracks. He keeps them sunflowers up tall to hide the good stuff in the back. Why don't you come on in? They'll treat you to a great value pizza. There's a can of Mountain Light, and no, they don't do the do. This stuff here's much sweeter, and it's three dollars cheaper, and you'll not tell no difference. prices then you can go to well why don't you come on and they'll treat you to a great value pizza there's a can of mountain light and no they don't do the do this stuff here's much sweeter and it's three dollars cheaper and you'll not tell no difference after one or two why don't you come on and they'll treat you to a great value pizza there's a can of I was talking to you a little, or talking to somebody off camera about my buddy Caleb Hall, and uh, Caleb's a Lexington native and a poet, and we've been writing some songs together, and so this one's called Mushroom Mansion. It's a song that we wrote together. I actually wrote this song at his house at like 2.30 in the morning on a kalimba. You ever seen those? It's like a little, oh yes. it's like a little board. It's got those little thumb piano thing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was called a kalimba. Is that what it's called? Maybe I'm wrong. No, I don't know. thumb piano, we good. I say things wrong all the time, so you might have to edit that out. Who knows? I Anyhow. like kalimba better than yeah, thumb piano. Than thumb piano. Anyway, so this song's called Mushroom Mansion, and it's just uh, a little song about a weird dream I had. I've been drinking most of my dinners. I've been running out of minners. So I wet a line a time or two with nothing on the end. I done 
and smoked my whole stash early once upon a time or 30 so I grabbed some cash that I can't use who gives a damn well you're damned if you do tomorrow's the 10th and I feel like the dude guess I'll reel it in life's a jar of jelly beans sometimes it's candy and sometimes it's cat treats you hold the jar there in your hand well sometimes it's licorice sometimes you gotta fish sometimes you don't understand Thank you, thank you. Uh, this next one is another love song I wrote for my wife, and uh, it's called "Nothing But Your Lovin'." And I, I kind of joked with her one time. We played a show in St. Louis, Missouri, and we were walking out uh, after the show, and she's like, "I just love that new song you wrote for me." I said, "I didn't write that for you." I said, "Don't you know I wrote that for our dog?" And uh, oh man, that really turned her stomach, man. I, she was so upset about that. So I've had to sing this song to her, you know, privately just to make her, you know, realize that I didn't write this for the dog. <laughs> but we have two big, beautiful dogs. One's name's Dizzy, and the other one's name's Dewey. And uh, so it was easy for her to think that I wrote, you know, the song about him, because he's such a good boy. But it's not about him. It's about her. And it's called Nothing But Your Loving. Neighborhood A, boys.
turn loose of everything as long as I've got you. I don't need nothing but your loving. Ain't it plain to see? I don't need nothing but your loving. Won't you give some love to me? I don't need nothing but your loving. Ain't it plain? Paint you a picture. I'll write you a song. I'll show you in harmony. My love for you is strong. I'll help mend your fences, set them in the earth. When you That's a beautiful song. Thank you. Well, we've got lots more music in conversation with Lucas Wayne. Uh, I would like to take a moment, if I may, to remind listeners that Red Barn live streams both tonight's and on any Wednesday remain available online for you to view at your convenience, along with live audio streams, compliments of WGAD.net in central New York. Don't miss a single episode of our program, and uh, be sure to tell your friends and share with them what it is that you like about Red Barn Radio that makes you keep coming back. That's what matters. Our guest next week uh, grew up outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 
Charlotte Morris discovered her passion for this work at a young age because the fabric of her home and family life was music. Classical music, Broadway tunes, and especially folk music. She said every family car ride that they took was full of folk classics. Joni Mitchell, Judy Collins, Simon and Garfunkel, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Charlotte learned also a number of instruments on her own, and before she knew it, she said, music grew from something I loved to something I absolutely needed. And this is where the story becomes interesting. She joined uh, a traveling uh, folk music tribute show called Lonesome Traveler, and um, while doing that, she actually had the opportunity to meet some of these heroes of her childhood, uh, like Tom Chapin, Harry Chapin's brother, uh, Peter Yarrow from Peter, Paul, and Mary, and Paul Stuckey, uh, too. And they would come and actually perform with the cast at some of those shows, and so it really came full circle, and it's a, it's a beautiful story. Next week, uh, Charlotte's got her own band coming with her from Nashville to play on Red Barn Radio. Put this broadcast on your calendar, please and plan to be with us for an evening of great music and fun conversation with Charlotte Morris. That's next week, Charlotte Morris, in studio and on Red Barn Radio's live stream, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. Now back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program. We welcome you live on our social media platforms, coming to you from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the horse capital of the world. That's called Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome back, Lucas Wayne. Thank you. Uh, this next tune we're going to do is a song that I wrote uh, a couple years ago uh, after reading Tom T. Hall had, a, had wrote a book about songwriting. I can't remember what it's called. But one of the exercises that he recommended that a songwriter might do is to drive around with a tape recorder and just talk about everything that you see and then go home and, and turn that into a song. And so I think it was... a uh, a day in like February or March when it was like the first warm day after a really long cold spell. And so I was driving around town and I noticed that people were out and there was even kids out selling lemonade and, you know, just trying to pretend like it was, it was the summer. And so uh, I sat down when I got home and I wrote this song called All Right For Now. And that's the name of this one. Kids still scream when I drive by and mama still hold. Baby's tied and grandma still criticize. Young boys riding on their bikes laugh and cuss and roll their eyes. Weatherman still lies when it's warmer. Teenage boys still drive too fast and girls still ride along and laugh. And daddy says they're wasting gas. Young kids burning all their cash and think these days ever pass ain't it a shame to be caught in a cycle again I'm not where I want to be but it's alright for now living in this old dead end town with busy streets I'm not where I want to be but it's alright for now think I need some unfamiliar ground beneath my feet i 
as gems of when we all were younger men. If we could all go back again, we'd do the things they never did. I think it's time to be the one that breaks out of line. It's all right for now. I'm still living in the same old dead end town with busy streets. I'm not where I want to be, but it's all right for now. I think I need some unfamiliar ground beneath my feet. I think I need some unfamiliar ground. Unfamiliar ground. I need some unfamiliar Thanks so much. <coughs> I came to Lexington in uh, 2021, 22, 22. I don't remember, but I can't. I think it was 21. And I came over and we did a uh, a podcast with W. B. Walker and Counterculture Productions at uh, the Scenecast Studio somewhere here in Lexington, and. Uh, the uh, the song that uh, kind of got everybody's attention that day was a song I wasn't even planning on playing. And uh, my friend Stephanie Compassi was there, and she's like, hey, sing that song about your papa. And I was like, oh, I don't. that's too long and sad and drawn out, and nobody wants to hear that. And so, I, you know, a year or so before that, my grandfather had passed away, and uh, it was during COVID, so we couldn't really visit with him, and he had went to the nursing home. And... Uh, as I told you where I live, you know, up the road from my house was where my grandparents' house was. So we all kind of lived on the same street. And uh, after he passed away, there was a lamp that they put on a timer in the window so it looked like someone was home. And I was sitting in my car one night, and I was looking up at that lamp, and I just thought, Man, you know, it must be really sad to be that poor little lamp in that empty house where no one turns you on. And I thought, no one turns me on. And the little light bulb went off in my own head, and I thought, I should write a song from the perspective of the lamp and how sad it is to be in an empty home. And so this song's called No One Turns Me On, and it's about that sad little lamp sitting on my granddad's table after he had gone to be with the Lord. I am a lamp on the table, the sun of the living room. You can find me shining morning, night, or noon. The old man that I work for, he's getting on in years. He was married 57, then she left him. Now I illuminate her picture 
stained with his mournful tears. He's up each morning drinking coffee and watching CNN. Says he's ready to go home, but home is where he's been the last time. And uh, now that we're all down in our feelings, I figured we'd do a drinking song. So this song is a song that me and my buddy Trailer Roberts wrote in 2015 when we were doing a semester in Nashville. Actually, we were in Brentwood, Tennessee at the Contemporary Music Center. And uh, it's a really great program for, uh, you know, college kids that want to get a taste of the music business in the big city of Nashville, you know, so... We got together and we wrote a couple of different songs, but this is one that I still like to play. It's called, I Just Came Here to Drink.
Friday night down in Kentucky. I ain't got a lot of money, but that's all right by me. I got a dollar and a coffee can, a half pack of lights. I'll ask forgiveness tomorrow for what I'm gonna do tonight. Well, I All right, great one. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little more more drinky at the end. It does. Know? It's great. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Only thing it was missing was something to drink. Yeah. Well, I got this water bottle. Water. <laughs> so, hey, uh, Lucas, I was wondering if uh, you might just take um, a minute or two to um, introduce 
our audience to your great band. Yeah, uh, of tell, course. Can you tell us about the Cotton Mouths? And yeah, I would love yeah. to. So this band uh, happened out of nowhere, really. Uh, I met I met Nate at an open mic. Um, Nate on the bass. Nate, uh, Nate on the stand up bass. Nate uh -huh. Graham, everybody. Yeah. And uh, yeah, make some noise for him. Yep. And uh, we met at a uh, open mic night. And actually, I should go back further because I met Max first. Um, Max on drums. Max Max Centini on the drums, everybody. Yeah. And uh, we'll get to Tim in a minute, okay? okay? This is Tim Whiteford on the steel guitar, electric guitar. Um, but anyway, I met I met Max first, and then I met Nate, and we went to an open mic. And Nate's like, I really like your songs. So you should come do this thing at this brewery. And so we did, and then Tim was there. And then we started kind of playing as a three-piece, and Max was in another group and then recently retired with that group. And then he was like, well, I guess I'll just play with you guys now. And that happened about what, like, I don't know, four or five months ago. And it just kind of naturally happened uh, as far as us coming together. But these guys have played forever, as you can tell. Nate Nate was on the road with uh, Vince Herman Band and, and Max was with Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. Tim's been uh, on that uh, Can You Duet with uh, – and the 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 hit show from I can't remember CMT CMT yes, I can't remember yes, the, right. the the yeah but and then uh, Tim also does some really cool horror he does horror movie scores huh? and uh, and does some horror themed reggae music which we'll get a little taste of a reggae <laughs> tune oh here really in just a little bit yeah we we got one a little work a little one worked up but it's not <laughs> scary it's actually well it could be I guess if, <laughs> if you think about it but anyhow. Um, but no, so you know, uh, that's the band, and yeah. we kind of we just met. I like I said, I live in Carmine. These guys all live in Carbondale, and uh, so I got to drive a little bit to practice. How far is them. that? It's about an hour and a half from my house. From here? No, uh, I meant from yeah, I meant yeah. From my house, it's places. an hour and a half. From here, it's like what is it, five hours to Carbondale from Lexington? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so hey Nathan, I'm just gonna. I just wanted to ask this just before we leave. Uh, before we leave this uh, this topic, um, when you first when you first heard Lucas's songs, do you remember? Yeah, oh, very much so. Yeah, and tell me, d like, what what is it that um, struck you? Some of the same stuff we've been talking He's about tonight. He sang that song about his grandpa, and everybody just the whole place got quiet. People that weren't even there to that don't care about music are like, what what's going on over here? You know, and huh. uh, basically, he wasn't looking for a band. We were just like, we're you need a band, and you needed to be us, and uh, we need to get a van, and and then sat down at my house and wrote down, you know, 40, 50 songs that he's written, and so we're just kind of going through those and uh, getting to play them and learn them, and it's been great. It's the perfect ensemble for these songs. I mean, it just it's, it's nice, it's nice, and it's it's spare. So I like you got the you got the just the little trap set there, and you know. Not banging it up too loud. It's just like supporting. We the song. made him it's leave great. all the time. It's just beautiful. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 beautiful stuff. Um, so I asked uh, I asked you earlier, Lucas, if their family members who are barbers. What I didn't ask you if is if you had other family members who are singers. So it's you know it's funny that you asked that because my grandpa, the song that we did a minute ago, uh, no one turns me on. Uh, he was a songwriter, and uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll sing you a little chorus of a song he wrote, if you'd like to hear I it. I would love it. Uh, it's called Little Debbie. It's about his favorite snack cakes. Uh. He just goes, Little Debbie, Little Debbie, oh, how I love thee, your chocolate, your oatmeal, though they be not fat-free. <laughs> When I go to the store, I go straight to your shelf, and I gaze at your boxes and wrappers with glee. I pick up a box, and what do I see? Why, there's little Debbie a smiling at me. I gather your goodies with joy and delight. With a smile on my face, I'll enjoy them tonight. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. yeah, so he wrote that, nice. and he wrote some other songs, gospel -y in nature. Um, but he, he would get up at church, and, you know, we had what we called the fifth Sunday sing. And that what, was what's that? Well, that's when the month happens to have five Sundays. Oh. You know, you got to go to church five times a month. Well, you might as well sing at one of them times. So uh, on the fifth Sunday at Sunday night, we would have the fifth Sunday sing. 
and anybody that wanted to get up and share a song or a poem or it was kind of like open mic night for Baptist church folk. Yeah. And then after we'd have us a big, you know, big spread of food and, and things. But uh, that's why, I, you know, kind of like going to church, you know, you get used to eating all the time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we would go on Sunday nights and grandpa, sometimes they would be like, hey, Wayne, get up there and sing it. Uh, that Little Debbie song, and he'd get up there and sing that, and the whole church would go wild. Huh. And, you know, I've reached out to Little Debbie a time or two and uh, tried to get that nothing, nothing. So hopefully, maybe they'll hear it this time here on the Red Barn Radio, and Little Debbie will reach out to me. My email is, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do all that. But, uh, you need a van that do yeah. Little Debbie on the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, what's, uh, do one about that, that neat Little Debbie. It's like a wafer. It's got chocolate on the outside, and it's like wafer. It's a peanut buttery, chocolatey. Oh, the Nutter Butter? Uh, no, it's called something else. Oh. But Nutter Butter, that's a, that's a cookie. Yeah, is it? I yeah. thought that was a Little Debbie. Oh. Yeah, but anyway, I, th that's a fine Little Debbie. It's hard Debbie. to keep my snack cake straight. That's a fine Little Debbie snack. <laughs> I'm a fudge round man myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, but so where else? So uh, what was your grandpa's name? His name was Lewis Wayne. So, so my name's Lucas Wayne. Ah. And, but that's our middle name. Our last name's Nelson. Don't yeah. tell nobody. Well, well, we already that was already a spoiler because yeah. we already told him about Nelson's on Main. Yeah, that's true. I mean we Nelson's barbershop. Yeah, we did. But yeah, so yeah, Lewis. Well, we have the same initials, which I've always liked. That. Huh. Is he a tenor too? You know, he he wasn't much of a singer. He uh, but he did sing, and he would sing in a lower kind of a lower register. Huh. And, and so when did you find when did you find that register that you uh, are comfortable in? I mean, it's it's um, it's really it's really pretty extraordinary, and your it's your voice has a sort of elasticity to it that's um, just great. You never know never know where you're going to take us. It's <laughs> nice. Uh, I guess you know, just I I really I grew up singing in church, and and one of the first times I sang was a special, and I sang it up in the girls' key, and they thought, well, that's too high, you know, whatever. I just started doing that, and then, you know, as I got older, uh, they say that the uh, the tenor voice matures around 20, 27, 26, something, somewhere around that. I had my tonsils out in 2021, and after that, it really oh. opened a lot of things up for me, and so I, I really attribute that surgery to uh, the way I can sing now, but of course, I had a lot of uh, training, and, and, you know, I went to college for... Uh, I, I went to college at KCU, uh, but before that I studied at North Central University in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and had a wonderful coach there. Yeah. And so did you? You went to so you went to college uh, for music. Um, uh, that was my intention. Yeah. But I didn't finish in music. Yeah. Yeah. I, and what what is it that put you off about um, sort of making an academic exercise of music? I think it was because I was too lazy, if you want to know the truth. The music theory yeah. kind of whooped my butt, and uh, I failed music theory, too. And I don't know if you've ever been to Minneapolis in the winter, I but it's a horrible place to be in the, in the wintertime. Some people love it, but I did not. I love it. Myself. And uh, I, I, had a real, I really struggled with mental health issues and stuff living in through that mm -hmm. winter. And so by the time that I had gotten done with, uh, with the music you know, class and, and everything. I skipped my juries, and I was like, I'm not coming back here. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this music degree, and I decided that I was going to study ministry, and I went to Kentucky Christian with uh, intentions to study advanced biblical studies, ah. but then ended up graduating with a humanities degree with an emphasis in music. Okay, so what you took away from Minneapolis, though, and that, that music training was some good coaching. Yeah, Somebody told sure. you how to take care of your voice, and how to how to exercise your voice some yeah and, and we sang you know we sang some opera pieces and uh, and things like that so huh but that was my next question was so what's the Kentucky part of the story and it's KC KCU so my grandmother also was uh, my grandma was from Martin County Kentucky and which is just on the you know on the border of West Virginia and she grew up there uh, along with six brothers and sisters and so. When I uh, was looking at transferring colleges, I found uh, this college called KCU, and I thought, well, if it's in the 606, I'll go. And so it was, and I, it was in, in, in Grayson, in Carter County. Yeah. And I looked it up, and I said, I wonder how far it is from Carter County to Martin County, and it was just like an hour and 20 minutes. And I thought, yeah, I'll go there, and then I could go hang out with my family on the weekends and, yeah. and kind of, you know, get to know that side of, of my of my heritage a little bit 
Yeah. And so that's what I did. I, I stayed in, at, at KCU from 2013, and I graduated in 2016, and I spent almost every weekend in Martin County in the hills and in, in the holler and, and uh, hanging with my cousins and aunts and, and uncles and things. And so So the goal, the goal in going to KCU, was it to sort of deepen your understanding of uh, uh, scripture and and whatnot was it to be uh, ordained so you could be a, a music minister at a church did you want to be in the pulpit what I don't was, I don't really know what I wanted at the time I think I just wanted to get a college degree because everybody told me my whole life you got to get a college degree if uh -huh. you want to amount to anything and uh, so I just you know hmm well, you got the pre you can got perform weddings now, and we made a record and mm. and when I was in college too, and I, I really that was probably the most beneficial thing I did while I was there. Uh, I had a little band we called ourselves Luke and the Somethings, and uh, we we cut like eleven songs there at the upper level recording studio on campus at KCU. It was called the upper level. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, because it was up on the second floor of. Y of yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I was wondering if it's some biblical reference. I'm sure it was too, you know. <laughs> you know I'm sure there was a double <laughs> like the entendre there, yeah, right. but it was mostly because it was on the second fl second floor. Um, and then, you know, that was that was my what I used as my senior project for my humanities degree. And so, really, I think that you know, spending that time with um, in that in that you know version of music was kind of my my real education was learning how to you know write songs and and record them and learning what not to do and you know making a record you you kind of if you've never done it before it, you really screw up a lot the first time <laughs> huh. so that was a good education yeah and and so i and so now in in the songs that you write now i don't hear much in the way of sort of specifically religious references really um i hear more uh just stories about the the people you love sure yeah, yeah. And, you know, not that I'm not, you know, into, I, I'm not anti-religion or anything yeah. anymore. I just don't, I, I don't know. I never uh, found myself really drawn to writing uh, Christian music or gospel music. I really, but uh, like I said, growing up, listening to gospel music, I always enjoyed singing in gospel quartets. And, and I was in a quartet briefly. Uh -huh. And uh, I like to, you know, I like to sing them old songs, but mm -hmm. I don't have any interest in uh, necessarily writing any from that. Well, there's no shortage of there's no shortage of uh, Christian songs and, and worship music. Uh, so uh, I don't know that anybody else needs to do that anymore. I mean, it's there's there's a lot of it out there. It's good stuff. You yeah, know, it's if great that, if that brings you joy. But you yeah, know. and I'd like you in my quartet if if I have a quartet. Yeah, I'd love to sing high tenor for you. I would want you in there. Uh, folks, Lucas Wayne and the Cottonmouths are with us here on Red Barn Radio tonight. We're going to get back to some music with them right now. All right. Thank you, Thank you guys. Uh, I said we was going to do a little kind of a reggae song, and I, I'm a man of my word. This song we're going to do next is called Who Are You Talking To? And I wrote it about a uh, just like the local guy that you know in every town that just kind of walks around and, and talks to himself a little bit. So... Anyway, here we go. Tell me who are you talking to when you're walking down the street? Is this what you always do whenever you move your feet? Come rain, shine, snow. The blistering summer heat Tell me who are you talking to Cause it sounds like you're talking to me Now there was sitting just minding my own Here he comes wondering if he's on the phone He's screaming, cussing, throwing a fit Next he's laughing, clapping, gonna get hit Cause he don't watch too closely when he walks down the street He might
there anyone in there he's talking at? Does he have so much to say? He can't hold back. Well, he's sometimes talking shirtless, but he's always in jeans. Never seeming wordless, I'm not trying to be mean. Won't you tell me, now who are you talking to when you're walking down the street? Is this what you always do whenever you move? Thanks a whole bunch. I guess a couple, uh, I don't know how long it's been now, but I guess you had Jordan Lee King on here not too long ago. So Jordan and I have also been writing some songs together. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we wrote this song. Well, I, I put this song, a uh, little poem up on Facebook one day. I've been... I got real inspired by Nicholas Jamerson for a little while, and I was writing something in my phone every day, like free writing, just anything that popped in my head. And so I wrote this little phrase that it just said, there's biscuits in the oven, gravy on the table. Most folks make it work as long as they are able. I just put that like on, the, on Facebook, and it had a couple of other lines that you'll hear. And uh, Jordan messaged me. He goes, buddy, you better turn that into a song. He said, I already got a verse for it. And so I go, okay. So he sent me a verse sang it and I was like well yeah that works pretty good and I added in a second one and we've been doing this song uh, well he's been doing it his way and I do it we do it our way so kind of like Hayes Carl and uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard on that drunken poet's dream kind of the way I like to think about it but anyway uh, this song's called Biscuits and it's written by me and Jordan Lee King Well, the apple tree's blooming, bees out in the yard, laundry on the clothesline, gas still in the car, a couple dollar bills on the washing machine, nothing on the TV we ain't already seen. You can toss out your trouble, Lord, it's easy if you try. There's enough there in your cupboard to bake a happy life. There's biscuits in the oven, gravy on the table. Most folks make it work as long as they are able. There's love if you can find it on movies to be made. And life can't be rewinded, so enjoy it every day. Enjoy it every day.
temperature here there's biscuits in the oven gravy on the table most folks make it work as long as they are able there's love if you can find it home movies to be made and life can't be rewinded so enjoy it every day enjoy it every day enjoy it This next one is uh, is one that uh, is is really special to me. You know, we were talking earlier about how I like to write songs for my family and my friends, and uh, but life's not always one big happy fun rainbow, you know. And uh, some fun sometimes, you know, you've got a family member that that really struggles with uh, with things, and and that was my cousin Tanya. She's she's she suffered from addiction, and she passed away. Um, from a a heroin overdose and uh, like I said my grandma's from Martin County and so we would always go uh, when I was even before I went to college when I was a little kid we we would go home almost every year for the family reunion uh, more family reunion and I have great memories of a lot of all my family but my cousin Tanya was a a musician too and she she sang and and uh, a lot of times you know We'd get down, and she'd have a little guitar. She'd sing Coal Miner's Daughter, or, or she'd do a gospel tune or something. And in uh, 2021, we didn't have the reunion because of COVID, and we didn't have it in 2020 either. And uh, But 2021, I got to really thinking about it, and I was thinking about her and how, you know, it, there was just a big hole where and there was a tonk-sized hole in our family reunion. Her name was Tanya, but we always called her Tonk. And so I sat down and I wrote this song, and it's called Hard to Break. And the tagline is, habits ain't like hearts, they're hard to break. And so this one's for my cousin Tonk. Did you know it'd be your last time getting high? Well, now you're five years clean, but not by prayer serene. Body lowered down, soul bound to fly. I can still hear you singing, holler all the ringing. You were echoing the ready land and good old gospel songs. And we laughed with exclamation at your story the vacations how you done some bad things right done some good things wrong another year Spoken every heart, the new you's been broken. 
broken and habits ain't like hearts they're hard to break Reckon I was mighty nervous. I was singing at your service. Well, I wanted to do right by you. I tried hard not to cry. Well, them suppers up are holler all the times getting smaller. But we'll sing again at the more reunion in the by by another year goes by and you're still on my mind you'll never know the impact that you made There are many people to thank for our broadcast. Uh, first, uh, Lucas Wayne and the Cotton Mouse, Lucas and Nathan and Tim and Max, uh, our guests on tonight's program. We want to thank all of you for listening to our webcast, watching us on social media, and those listening to us on the network of Red Barn radio stations. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn's premier radio partner, Central and Eastern Kentucky's radio news leader. You can listen online at weku.org. Those of you here in the central Kentucky area, you gotta be sure to check out Red Barn TV. It's our weekly program of music now on ABC 36 WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the great city of Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. And now, uh, before we close out tonight's program, I wonder if we could get Lucas and Cotton Mouse to do one more. That'd be great. Yeah, I think we got. We'd I love think it. We got one more song for you. All right. And this is a. Uh, this is a tune about my favorite herb. And uh, I'm like we, we're from Southern Illinois, you know, so we have different legality things happening over there, you know. And uh, so I wrote this song. You've heard of not your father's root beer. This is not your papa's pot.
nothing but his socks and I reckon that he walked all the way to the civil on the level. This ain't your papa's pot. That's all for our show for this week. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. And, uh, folks, it's always great to hear from all of you who listen to Red Barn Radio's archive performances on your favorite streaming platforms. Speaking of you, uh, listeners, please, before, during, or after you enjoy Red Barn Radio, take just a moment to engage with us. We like it when you like us. We like the thumbs up. That's all wonderful. But your comments, your sharing, and certainly your choice to subscribe matter so much to us. And they'll keep us growing and continuing our mission to bring Roots Music Southern style to your neck of the woods and beyond. Now we bid you good night. Let's stick together. Let's appreciate each other. And let's join up again next week for another great evening of music and conversation on Red Barn Radio. I'm Bradford Becker. See you next time. <laughs>